Alright everybody, welcome back. In this video we're going to move forward and we're going to start applying the methodology for diagramming uh, out our GIS procedures to a very simple problem that should give you an idea about uh, what we're going to be doing here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first problem. It's a rather simple problem. How many coffee shops are there within three miles of campus? This is a simple problem, but it's, it's a perfectly good GIS problem. It's one that we may want our computers to solve all the time, especially if you are using something like Google Maps or Apple Maps and you're sitting on campus and you're looking for a place to meet some friends or maybe just going to uh, relax someplace off campus. We may want uh, the mapping applications on our phones to be able to identify the coffee shops that are within three miles of campus, let's say. So, simple problem, but uh, sort of a real life one here. So, what do we, what's the first thing we need to think about when we're posed this question, if this is our question? Well, the first thing that we need to think about is what kind of data are we going to need? What kind of data is going to be required uh, in order to solve this, this question, or solve this problem, or answer this question? And so, it looks like what we're going to need in order to do this uh, is uh, two different files here. Let's say that we have campus and we also have a data file of coffee shops. So just for the sake of uh, sake of example here, let's go ahead and say that the campus file that we've got, these are vector data files, maybe they're shape files. Uh, the campus a data file here is a polygon file and let's just say for the uh, sake of example here that uh, the coffee shops are points. So I mean they could be polygons, maybe we actually have a, the footprint of all of the coffee shops around in the city or something like that. We could have that, so they could be polygon. But uh, let's, uh, let's just say that we have points, I mean, because that seems like a, a perfectly uh, reasonable set of data sets to have campuses or you know areas so it makes sense to represent them as an area and we could certainly have a point for every coffee shop on campus. So this is our original data here. We have files of campus and we have a, a file of coffee shops. Now we need to put them through some operations in order to derive our answer. Well how are we going to go about solving this question? Well let me go ahead and show you the way that most people diagram out a solution to this uh, question once we've been through the core GIS toolkit, they tend to do something like this. And it's a perfectly valid way of going about doing it. It will get you to the answer. They'll say, well, I need to know all of the areas that are within three miles of campus. Where is that? So they say, well, let's take the campus file and let's run a buffer on it. So we're going to put that through the buffer geoprocessing operation. We want it to buffer at a distance of three miles. And then what output are we expecting? We're expecting the output file from that to show us all areas within three miles of the campus. So see how this works? How our diagram is laid out here? Campus is the input to the buffer tool, specification of three miles for our buffer distance, and then we're going to get all areas within three miles of campus. Sounds pretty good so far. Then what's the next thing that we would do? Well, we'd take coffee shops and run a selection by location. And then our parameter here for the selection by location is within. We'd be looking for all coffee shops that are within that area file. It'll be an area file that that buffer returns and we've got points from all of the coffee shops around the city. We want to select those coffee shops by location, selecting all coffee shops within that buffer. And then when you do that, your expected output there will be the answer. All coffee shops within three miles of campus. So simple problem there. We only have a few different uh, steps here. We have two different operations that we're putting through here. But I hope that you can see that we can chain uh, these together and how we derive this answer. By the way, I do have this dotted line here connecting here to here. And I just uh, use this dotted line here or this dashed line. I think it's sometimes I use a dashed line too to show you that this is a, a parameter 
of uh, a function that it's going into, but it's not the main input. So what are we doing here? We're selecting by location. We're selecting these coffee shops by location. We're selecting all of the coffee shops that are within. Well, within what? Well, the tool is going to ask you for within what? So within what? Well, it's going to be within this uh, area file right here. And so that's why I connect it with this dotted line. So you know that it's a, like an auxiliary piece of information that this tool here is going to need. So there we go. There is the answer to this question. I want to look at another way to solve this question because there are very frequently multiple ways to solve GIS questions and uh, we'll talk about which one may be better or worse in a moment but uh, there are very very frequently more than one way to go about uh, solving a GIS problem so let's look at a, another solution another potential solution for this same question this one is even simpler in terms of the number of operations involved Check out here that we just have one operation. We're just using the select by location. So we have coffee shops input. We're selecting the coffee shops. Here's my dotted line saying that this is auxiliary information. Campus is auxiliary information in this uh, selection by location procedure. Please select all coffee shops that uh, are within a distance of three miles of what? The campus. And when you do that, it returns your answer. Answer, coffee shops within three miles of campus. There we go. That is a one-step procedure to get to the answer that we want. Selection by location within a distance of three miles. Well, now, how do you know that you uh, could do this? Well, just knowing that this is an option in the selection by location tool is a very important thing to know. And that has to do with getting familiar with your tools. Okay, selection by location, great. What different spatial relationships does your particular software package recognize when you're executing a selection by location? Well, in the ArcGIS software platform, for instance, uh, within a distance of happens to be one of the options in the drop-down list showing you that this is a spatial relationship that that particular software package recognizes. And so if you know that, you're familiar with your tools, you understand how your system works, then I'll know, hey, if, I'm in a, if I've got a question like this, how many coffee shops are there within three miles of campus, and I'm given uh, this coffee shops data set, and I'm given this campus data set, well, selection by location within a distance of three miles, I can get straight to the answer one step. Like I said, not common that you're able to do all these in one step, but this one you could do in one step. So knowing that, let's take a look at both of these procedures in comparison. So here are the two procedures. Which solution is better? Well, in a certain sense, they both get you to the right answer. I mean, if we need to know coffee shops within three miles of campus, both of these do get you to the right answer, so I mean they're equivalent in that regard. Uh, but we could think about what might make one of these solutions better or worse than another. And admittedly, when we're just starting out here, uh, maybe it doesn't particularly matter that much, but I like to go ahead and get students thinking in a particular way. Go ahead and point a couple of things out to them so they can go ahead and have some things churning in the back of their mind. And this is really about uh, efficiency in solving problems. One of these solutions is clearly more efficient than the other. And efficiency does matter. Uh, particularly in a lot of different circumstances, but uh, you know you get the right answer in a couple different ways, but now which way is most efficient? So let me just point out this particular step here. In this solution, we were running this buffer operation, and as a result, we generated this file right here, okay? So think about what's going on here. The computer is taking campus and then it's executing a buffer operation on this campus data set. And then it is creating a whole new data set right here that's storing that buffer information, 
know, that's something that uh, is a data file that is being created. And so it's, you're going to have to specify where you want to put that data file on your hard drive or on a thumb drive, or, you know, on some kind of drive uh, that you want to save it to. This operation takes time, okay? The buffer operation takes time to run. Depending on what you're buffering, maybe Campus is pretty easy, but you know, if you're buffering a much larger data file, uh, the buffer operation can take time depending on the processing speed of the computer that you're using. So this takes time to execute. Then it takes time for the computer system to write out this file. That's a physical operation that the computer has to do. It has to write out that uh, file and then it stores it down here or wherever you choose to have it saved and then it goes down here to the coffee shops and executes this selection by location and returns to you your answer. Great. What happens to this file? I guess you might notice that we don't really care about this file. Uh, it's something that we did. We executed this buffer in order to get to this answer, but you know, maybe I don't even want to look at this buffer. I, you know, I, I don't need it. I don't really care uh, about having a data file sitting on my hard drive someplace taking up space. Uh, that I, I executed so that I could see all the areas within three miles of campus. What am I going to do with it when I'm done? Do I need to go back and delete it? You know, if I get taking up space on a, a portable hard drive that I brought into the computer lab or something like that, uh, maybe I don't want it. So in this circumstance, this one is more efficient. It's going to take, uh, this one's more efficient. It's going to take a lot less time to run, potentially, uh, I mean, in a very simple sort of uh, operation that may take not much time at all. But on the whole, this will take less time to run, and I don't have to worry about what do I do with this uh, extra data file that I created that I really don't want. You're going to find that when you're solving problems in GIS um, that organization is essential. Knowing exactly what you're creating uh, knowing exactly what you've got, that's extremely important. And so if you're in a situation where you don't have to generate some data and you don't have to have sort of these intermediate steps stacking up, then that's better. <laughs> you're going to appreciate it if you don't have to, you don't have all of that because it's just more stuff to manage, it's more stuff to think about. So admittedly in this very simple solution, Maybe it doesn't matter all that much, or the simple procedure, maybe it doesn't matter all that much. We do get to the exact same answer using both, but I do have one way that's more efficient than the other. So I do want you to, even though we just got started here, to kind of have in the back of your mind that maybe we should think a little bit about efficiency when we're solving problems, and that is something that we'll get back to in later lessons, and especially if we go on to more advanced uh, courses in problem solving, geospatial problem solving. I teach a course specifically on that subject uh, where we do bring these sorts of things into uh, a lot more focus. But there's one other thing that I want to point out to you about these solutions here and that is that these solutions are geometry independent. I say they're geometry independent because even though this is sort of counterintuitive to many students when we get started, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about the geometry of the vector data files. And of course, when you think about GIS data, you think about, you know, maps and you think about looking at the, the data visually inside of a GIS software package. And yet here we are when we're talking about solving problems with GIS, we're not looking at a bunch of geometry here. I'm just looking at the diagram of a workflow. So and notice here, okay, answer, coffee shops within three miles of campus. How many are there? Well, I don't know. I'll go and look at my data file after I'm done with this process and find out. Maybe 10, maybe 5, maybe none. Maybe there are no coffee shops within three miles of campus. But uh, the important thing is that regardless of what this campus data file looks like, whatever the geometry of this data file looks like, and whatever the geometry of this data file looks like, if I execute this procedure or that procedure, either one of them, if I execute one of these procedures, I'm going to end up with the answer regardless of what the geometry looks like. 
And that is something that else that's extremely powerful about our GIS problem-solving procedures. Maybe we are executing this procedure uh, because we want to run it about the University of Illinois. Okay, then you come down here and you insert your uh, data file about the uh, University of Illinois campus right here, and then you get all of the coffee shops that are around uh, the Urbana-Champaign area, and then you execute one of these procedures and you get it. Now if you want to go and do the same thing, if you have the same question, how many uh, coffee shops are within three miles of the University of Alabama? Well, then you pull in the uh, data file for the geometry of the campus of the University of Alabama, you pull out your data file of all of the, or you go and create a data file of all of the coffee shops in Tuscaloosa, then you execute the exact same procedure and you get the answer for that campus. So I don't have to create, I mean this is kind of obvious, but it's an extremely important foundational point that I don't have to go and create a new procedure for every single different campus because they've got all different geometry. It's the same procedure and then all I'm going to be doing is plugging in the data that I've got for that particular area, executing the same procedure, and then I get the answer for that particular area. So it, most of the time when we're sitting here diagramming out this, we're trying to think about it in a geometry independent way. We're not trying to think, okay, now what does this look like? What does the campus look like in order to solve the problem? We need to be able to account for different variations in geometry. Uh, and we will, th we will talk about that. But on the whole, uh, what the geometry actually looks like, well, we'll let the computer take care of that uh, when we execute the procedure. It'll take care of, well, in this situation, the ge geometry looks like this in these data files, and so the solution is this. We won't look at that all that often when uh, we are uh, diagramming these out. We're going to diagram them out in a geometry-independent way. All right, well, that is uh, our brief introduction to GIS problem solving. And we will continue with a more sophisticated problem in the next video.